In your book, you mentioned Zadie Smith, I think it was, oh, saying yes. that Rose's character is so realistic and she wants to write one like that. And I've seen That's other... like a compliment bomb. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> well, <laughs> Zadie Smith liked my writing. Thank but you. I've seen other people write that as well. And obviously, you know, we're still asking about Bob and Rose, yeah. even though we didn't see a clip from it. So what do you think it is about those characters that resonate with people That's so much? interesting, isn't it? I have no idea. It's, it's, I, can actually, I can actually remember the moment I thought of... Well, actually, they were based on a real couple, so maybe that was part of it. It was, I think something magic happened in Bob and Rose because it was, it's the story of a gay man who falls in love with a woman. And I set out, in Manchester, this really happened to two people I knew and there was a ferocious prejudice about it, that, particularly amongst gay men. All of us gay men were lining up going, he's having a mental breakdown, he just wants children, he's using and abusing her. And um, until, and so I set out to write all that prejudice and all that animosity until I got about five pages into it and I went, well, anyone who's prejudiced about this couple is stupid. It was kind of already commissioned, wasn't it? And, mm. it was like, and I was going, anyone who objects to a gay man falling in love with a woman is an idiot. I can't write six hours of idiots and people standing up going, I think this is wrong. It's just, just stupid. And so actually I was literally faced with the blank page and I think it kind of became magic. I think it kind of became, all I could do was like celebrate two people falling in love. And I do think, if, if I can praise my own work, I think when they meet on that street corner, it re they really talk like, it's a very hard thing to write, talking like two people falling in love the moment they meet. Their dialogue just clicks. And they talk about nonsense. They talk about VHS and they talk about Liam Rhymes and things like that. And there's just two people just go like that. And you know, when they, you say people click, I think for, I'm not sure I could ever do it again. For once in my life, in my career, I, I wrote two people clicking. And I think that click, goes through the entire series. I think it's properly a little bit of magic. And then a great director came along, Julian Farino, and Joe Wright directed the second book, two brilliant directors who got that, who just clicked with it. Whole series of clicks. It's all about the clicks. It clicked. Lucky accidents. That's yeah. what it always is. It is a lucky accident. Should we just take one more question at the back, number four? Yeah. Hi, Russell. Um, I was just wondering, you've made such an eclectic range of shows. Is there any territory or genre you've yet to tackle that you'd love to get your teeth into. Oh my God, a million. They're like lining up with Nicola now, especially. And actually, truly, it's like, you might have read interviews with me, I'm trying to work on a drama about the AIDS crisis in the 80s, which is a script that's proven very hard to get right. And, um, and I'll keep working on it, and I'll get it right in the end. I do, I do think, I mean, it's, I've, you've seen I've, all these gay characters, all those gay men arguing in kitchens and, 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 and driving up and down in jeeps and stuff like that. I mean, I've, I've had a great joy, and I've written a lot of, not just gay men, gay characters. I've written lesbians and trans characters, and it's been a great joy in it. I think, I think if I get to my deathbed and haven't written about the age crisis, I would consider myself to have failed, to be blunt. I think that it would be a shame if I've done them larking about in Jeeps and I haven't done the greatest gay story that has happened in our lives, in our history. So, um, so yeah, yes, there's a million other things I want to write as well. And I want to write and draw Asterix books. That's a very interesting thing. And Nicola, there's one thing we're meant to announce yes, here today. What, yeah, you'll what I'm doing next is out. we're being naughty now. We're meant to announce this because I'm currently, it was like a press release. I'm working on this thing, a drama about Jeremy Thorpe, uh, who was a disgraced politician from the 70s. And, and that's being played by Hugh Grant. And the whole point of being here today is also to announce the, the, the character of Norman Scott and that is being played by Ben Whishaw. Which is very exciting. Very right. exciting. So there's, that's a scoop for the Edinburgh Television Festival. That's a great cast, isn't it? That shoots in October. It'll be out next year. That's properly exciting. I love that. I'm very excited by that project. I think we have to finish. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, sorry. Let's just take one more because I'm a rebel. <laughs> Hi, you um, said that you felt old-fashioned because you didn't cast Doctor Who as a woman. Do you regret not doing that? Oh, no, I don't regret it at all. And let's be honest, you've got to be self-deprecating in these remarks. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm very, very oh, proud of everything I made and did, so don't worry about that. It's kind of how you play the game. Oh, what a great idea. It is a brilliant <laughs> idea. I'm so excited by it. But would I recast anyone I'd cast? Absolutely not. I love them. And it's, it's the future. It's, it's, and I'll go off and do something else. So I can't wait for next year for Jodie Whittaker in 2018. That is, that's a great place to end, actually, because it's like, how exciting is that going to be? Thank you. Thank you so much for your brilliant work. Thank you. Yay.